A significant source of defects in finished wafers is misalignment between layers. So what we mean by misalignment is when we expose the wafer to the mask of a certain layer and then we go and expose to the mask of a second layer, there's a slight misalignment between the two masks so that there's a relative uh, offset between the mask and the wafer in one layer relative to the other. Uh, this can be uh, devastating and can have a very bad effect. Uh, for example, uh, looking at the situation in this figure, we uh, have on the leftmost figure the situation which we wanted to create, in which we have a polysilicon gate. This is a MOSFET gate, and we have a metal wire on a uh, higher layer, and we want to create a contact between uh, these two. As we will see in the locus process, uh, the polysilicon gate is, is made using a certain mask, while the metal wire is, used, uh, is made using a different mask. So if there's a misalignment between um, how the mask for the polysilicon layer and the mask for the metal layer um, are uh, put in on top of the wafer, then we could have a situation like in the middle where uh, the metal wire is, is a little bit shifted to the right and so uh, the contact between the metal and the polysilicon is not only not at the correct location, but also takes place through a much reduced uh, cross section. This means that the resistance of this contact between the metal and the polysilicon is much higher than anticipated, much higher than planned for, which could lead to unplanned for delays, unplanned for setup time violations. It could be, uh, it could cause the circuit to fail in certain ways. In fact, if the misalignment between the two layers is severe enough, we can actually completely miss the uh, contact and we can form an open circuit where uh, one was not planned. You can also imagine situations in which you form short circuits where short circuits were not planned because of misalignment. So misalignment can also cause us to not form a transistor when a transistor was planned. So it is a severe issue. It is something that we have to deal with. Um, this is particularly important in, uh, in projection exposure because in projection exposure we use stepping and we are exposing only a certain area of the wafer at a time. So we need to ensure that the mask is correctly um, aligned on top of the part that we are stepping to at, this, uh, at, at the particular uh, step. So the first method of alignment that we can use can be used to globally align the wafer uh, to the uh, structure which we use for exposure. And this can usually be done uh, in a very coarse fashion using guide structures that are created on the wafer. So in this setup, for example, the wafer has uh, two notches on uh, two opposite ends. These two notches can be used to guide the uh, alignment of the wafer with uh, the mounting setup for exposure. And it can be done manually or automatically under a microscope or just, you know, uh, but it, it's actually a very rough process because what we care about is not this first initial global alignment. What we care about and what we are really concerned about is misalignment, relative misalignment between two different masks for two different layers. So the initial setup is not as important as um, what happens when we move from layer to layer. Uh, and so this requires us to do something a little bit different, which is when you look at the mask for a certain layer, this mask will contain the features that we want to create at that layer. So let's imagine that we are doing, for example, the polysilicon layer, which we will see is the layer we use to create MOSFET gates. Then it will contain a drawing of all the MOSFET gates in all the locations on uh, the chip. We also introduce uh, dummy features uh, on the wafer, uh, on this uh, on this mask. The dummy feature, which is uh, usually in the shape of a cross, for a reason that will become clear shortly, would create a dummy feature on the wafer. So this dummy drawing in the mask is going to create a dummy feature. So let's imagine that this is a polysilicon uh, feature that is created on the chip in a specific location. 
Now, this dummy feature does nothing. If it's, um, it's going to form a PN junction, we have to reverse bias this PN junction. If it's going to form uh, some wire, this wire has to be left open circuited. So it does nothing electrically useful. It is just lying there. Why? Because when we move to the higher layer, to the next layer, to layer N plus 1, we are also going to have the same um, feature drawn at the same location. And again, it does nothing. And what we have to do is we have to align the mask for layer N plus 1 so that the feature that was created from layer N is visible under the mask of layer N plus 1. When we do this, we can ensure that we have created perfect alignment between the two layers. Now, um, why are we using a cross? Because there are three ways in which we can have misalignment. We can have misalignment in the X direction, we can have misalignment in the Y direction, but we can also have rotation, which can cause misalignment. A cross is a feature that guarantees that we have aligned in the Y direction, in the X direction, and in the rotation direction. But because a die can be uh, big, or the area that is exposed to the mask can be big, it is safer to have two crosses on uh, two opposite corners. If we can see the feature that was created at a lower level through the mask, then we can ensure that we have done uh, pretty good alignment. Now, uh, when we talked about misalignment, we talked about uh, misalignment between metal and poly, for example, that could lead uh, to the formation of unwanted shorts or opens. Uh, but there's also another kind of misalignment that we have to be worried about, which is misalignment between uh, the drain and source on the one hand and the polysilicon gate of the MOSFET. So when we look at uh, a fabrication flow, we'll discover that we uh, create all the features in a certain layer simultaneously. So I'm going to create all the uh, drains and sources in one pass and then all the gates in another pass. If the, uh, there is a misalignment, even if it is like a very slight misalignment between the polysilicon gate and uh, the sources and drains, then the gate is going to miss part of the channel. And this will lead to loss of electrostatic control by the gate on the channel of the MOSFET. And it will lead to a very rapid increase in the threshold voltage and will lead to loss of transistor action uh, very rapidly. Notice that however good our uh, efforts at alignment are, we're always going to have some degree of misalignment, which is why we will discuss uh, in later videos something called design rules, which guarantee that even if there's slight misalignment, we still get a, an acceptable yield. But a slight misalignment when we have a contact between a metal wire and a polysilicon wire will cause the contact to move a little bit. But we will not miss the contact. We will even, we'll not even um, increase the resistance of the contact. Uh, if we can guarantee that the misalignment is not dramatic, we can guarantee that the contact is formed perfectly, which is why we use this method for alignment. However, any slight misalignment between the polysilicon gate and the sources and drains will be devastating. So even this kind of alignment is not going to be enough to guarantee that we create proper transistors, which is why when we go and see how we fabricate transistors, we will find that we use something called the self-aligned process, in which we do not uh, rely on uh, alignment strategies to guarantee that uh, MOSFETs will form. Instead, we fabricate the gates first and then implant the sources and drains, ensuring that we can always see a MOSFET in the location we want. And um, the reason, the, uh, the, because we do this, we end up not being able to use metal gates. So we will see in the self-aligned process that we have to use polysilicon gates because we have to create the sources and drains after the gate.